It doesn't get much more pro than a personalized e-mountain bike. Upgraded parts and custom colorways to get you a high performance and of course, to get those heads turning on the trails with that something a little bit special. You gotta love a customized e-bike. It's all about kind of upgrading it, but adding in your own little personal touch along the way. Yeah, it's for the personalization, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you could be looking at such things as a higher performance fork or damper, but it's gotta be color coded. True, true. Maybe adding a bigger battery, more miles, more smiles. Yeah, or maybe something e-bike specific, such mm -hmm. as wheels, but it's gotta have the Gucci graphics, it's all in the detail. It is all in the details. Check out this absolutely amazing Dream Levo build by the guys at e uh, Raceco Cycles. Hope brakes, cranks, color coordinated rotors, fork decals, headset spacers, seat collar and cranks. That is an absolutely amazing bike. Yeah, do you know what? I think the guys at Raceco have made some, some proper beautiful custom builds. Custom builds. Mm -hmm. um, but you know what? You might want to take a practical uh, angle on your customization. Maybe you want to go for some lightweight wheels, mm -hmm. uh, skinny, fast rolling tires because you live in a in a hot, dry climate and you ride those a fast single track. Or maybe you want to uh, run some heavy duty, aggressive downhill tires because your riding is a bit more gravity orientated. True, true. It could be all those other components as well. Saddles, bars, stem, you name it. But we've got another dream build coming in from Raceco. Oh, the Cube. This is the Cube. Look at it, Invisiframed, wheels have been upgraded to Hope, Orange Hope crank arms, Michelin Wild Enduro Rubber, SQ Labs uh, e-bike seat, Sunrace cassette, Berg Tech bar, and Hope stem. Yeah. Absolutely stunning that, look at it. Yeah, have a look at this 2020 Kinevo, again from Rich and Raceco Cycles. It's got a, a Fox 40 triple clamp fork up front, it's got MV rims, it's got Hope brakes, it's got Hope wheels. Uh, and of course, that Kashima Factory Fox Dropper Post. Wow, that's absolutely beauty. amazing. That beauty, one. beauty, beauty. But didn't you catch up with Bruce and Jay from Mudhugger and talk about all things suspension with those guys? I did actually. They had a brace of uh, the lower end uh, Levo bikes, but they upgraded the suspension. So, uh, yeah, quick little chat with those guys. So, here we have Bruce's bike, and here we have Jay's bike. Jay and Bruce. Jay and Bruce, good to see you. Hiya. Uh, good to see you. Bit of a background to these guys. Now, if you know Loic Bruni, who's the world downhill champion, if you have a look at the front of his bike, he has got one of these mud hugger mud guards on there. Uh, Bruce, let's start off with you. Now, the biggest change I can see to these these bikes. Now, these are you bought these as Levo comps, right? Yeah. Is that correct? Correct. Now, the Levo comp comes with a Revelation fork and an air shock on the back. Yeah. There's some big changes here in terms of suspension, right? Oh yeah. Coil and a Lyric up front. So what's it all about? We, we just wanted to go for a little bit more performance and the fact that the, uh, the Lyric just comes in a lovely blingy red color. Ah, just, right, yeah. um, you know, <laughs> it, it, it just- the blue. Yeah, and it kind of goes with it, bit of contrast. <laughs> yeah, 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 so uh, we thought, well, why not? You know, let's, yeah. let's do something special. The Levo, we loved the bike. Yeah. I thought it was a fantastic bit of kit, but if we could improve it a little bit, yeah. So That's you've improved it. it. I mean, the Lyric is a is a structurally more stiff fork, yeah. and also it's got 160 mil over the 150 of the Revelation. Yep. Is that right? That's right. A bit more travel makes it a little bit more plush. It quietens the ride down on really rough stuff. Um, lets me ride with a bit more um, aggro. Bit more, yeah. <laughs> okay. Aggro <laughs> panache. <laughs> uh, Bruce, how much do you weigh? About 13 and a half stone. Right, that's a conversion to kilos of what? 85? 85, 85 kilos? Yeah. So if you guys are looking to get this set up on your Levos, uh, Bruce has got a 600 spring on there. Yeah. Uh, I've actually jumped on the bike as well at 90 kilos and it's about right for me too. Right, let's move on to Jay and his Levo. Jay, was the reason you went for the, the alloy bike rather than the carbon bike? Price. Obviously, yeah. it was one. Yeah. Um, I think this was about five thousand pounds when we first bought it. I think they're a bit more now for this year's. Um, but also, uh, we've had carbon bikes before. Yeah. And longevity is always a bit of a concern for me. Right. Okay. Uh, now, Jay, the big difference to this bike, it doesn't look the same as Bruce's. Uh, it's the no, wheel, right? That's right. I. Um, I trashed my rear wheel over at Elam Valley the other week. Right. And uh, Well, you just found this kicking around? <laughs> I wish. It's a hope, right? It's a hope, yeah. Yeah. 35mm rim, uh, 650B. 
Okay. So um, if it's good enough for Loic Bruni on the mullet, I oh, thought, well, right, okay. and I'm not of the, the greatest of stature, as you right. can tell. Yeah. Um, so there's a nice bit of, nice bit of mud clearance of mud in clearance at the back now, yeah. which um, going into the winter months is, is good, I think, because yeah. that is very tight on the, uh, on, the, on the standard lever. Yeah, so 29 up front, 27.5 on the rear. Yeah. Obviously, having a smaller wheel has lowered the bottom bracket by a bit. Yeah. Does that not now interfere with your, with your pedal strikes and stuff like I that? I haven't noticed any right. noticeable difference, okay. really. Right. Jake, same question to you. How much do you weigh? About nine stone. Right, so okay. So 60K. 60K. And what spring have you That's got on 450 there? 450 on that. 450 spring. Right, I think uh, we should now go down and see J uh, Jake at Sprung Suspension to measure the uh, change in the geometry of the bike. I just checked out the head angle on Jay's bike. It comes in at 64 degrees, which is two degrees slacker than what the lever is as standard. Uh, moving on to the bottom bracket. Now, if it's too low, it means you're gonna be clattering your pedals. Uh, it comes in about 338, which means this bike really is gonna be diving through those corners. Right, it's news time and news usually means new bikes on the market. And this week, Merida launched their new Alloy series, the Alloy Limited Edition series bikes. Now, obviously this comes in the footsteps of their carbon range. Uh, now, what's quite interesting is the fact that if you wanted to get an entry level bike at the moment from Merida, it comes in at uh, 5,099 euros. However, that comes with a Shimano E7000 motor. Now, there's nothing wrong with the Shimano E7000 motor because we've ridden it many times and found it not wanting in the slightest. However, if you want to go up in price to the E8000 motor, they start at 6,199 euros. So this is where this new Alloy limited edition bike comes into its own. You can actually get one of these bikes with the more expensive E8000 motor at 4,699 euros. Good price, good it's price. It's a good price. It's, you know, like you were talking about affordable bikes mm -hmm. last week. You know, obviously affordable is relative to different people, but it's not a bad price for a, for a bike with a good spec on it. Yeah, taking a look at it, some great components on there. Still has a dropper seat post, Maxxis the side guy tires, weigh, weighing in at 23 kilos, so pretty lightweight. Yeah, it's not bad, is but it? But what do you think about the material compared to the carbon, aluminium versus carbon? Come on. I have never actually found alloy wanting over carbon. Yeah, it's a massive generalization. Obviously it depends on, on the manufacturer, but overall I think you can get a really good high performing alloy bike as well as high performing carbon one. So I think uh, for people out there looking for a, you know, a great bike with some decent geometry, that should be one bike you should be looking at. In other news this week, we saw Bernard Kerr lighting it up once again on Instagram, doing burnouts, big doubles. That man has got some serious style on the bike. I think it's kind of- Burning rubbed, Bernard. Burning Bernard. <laughs> kind of like Supercross <laughs> training's rubbed off on him and he's absolutely flying on his pivot shuttle. Check it out. So coming up on the channel this week, we've got a really exciting week coming up on Sunday. Well, Steve's already done the spoiler about that one. We're Sorry. talking about our e-bikes, motorbikes. We're taking a petrol bike versus an e-bike out on the trails. Pretty interesting Mental. day out. Mental. Crazy day out. Smoky. <laughs> uh, and before that, on Friday, Chris has got a great video called E-Bike Habits to Break. And actually, there was someone there which I hadn't even thought about. Yeah, I'm a guilty of a few of those ones. And the weather was absolutely... Amazing. <laughs> well, last week's show caused a bit of a stir, that's for sure, on good. affordable e-mountain bikes. Uh, Vor Power uh, in the comments says that bloody affordable, more like unaffordable. What happened to the 500 to 1,000 pound price bracket? It's a good point. The, the problem with affordability is we're not actually here to judge what's affordable or not, and it, it's all relative. One person's affordable is not another person. So, yeah. but I think on the whole, if you call them entry-level bikes, then entry-level mid-drive bikes come in around about 1,500 pounds, right? Yeah, I just say 500 pounds for an e-bike is pretty, not a lot of cash, is it? I mean, there's no. a lot of cash to spend, but I mean, you're not gonna get a lot of bike for 500 pounds when it comes to an e-bike. We've talked about it many, many times. Mm -hmm. It's that, it's the difference between an e-bike and an e-mountain bike. If you want performance off-road, I think you have to have a mid-drive bike, and that's why, the, the price difference. That's why it goes from, uh, when you go up to 1,500 pound, you get you get hub drive, and then you go past that 1,500 pound, you get the mid-drive bikes, but you get the ability to do things you cannot do on a hub drive mm -hmm. bike. Get out of the mountain bike in. Mm -hmm. But Island Ariel, he's saying, watch out for crappy coil forks in the cheaper bikes. Now, yeah. I think Kevin, the bike you took up Snowden, was pretty interesting. That had some coil forks on there, didn't it? They're it, pretty uh, nasty. Uh, 
pretty nasty. I mean, you've not got damping. You literally have got a spring, so you've got a pogo stick going up and down the hill. So it's simple <laughs> as that. So you might as well not. Yeah, yeah you're probably better off with kind a of, you're better off with a rigid steel fork. Looks like a suspension like fork, right? Looks like it. <laughs> Certainly not like it though. Yeah. <laughs> Lastly, Christopher Nutt. He's saying I love my 750 watt Buffang mid drive kit, but I won't be getting another one. The money I saved is wasted in time and parts. I'd recommend a hub drive for commuters and a proper e mountain bike for trails. Just what like I think said. Christopher Nutt. Yeah, mm -hmm. sums it up absolutely perfectly there. So, what have you guys been up to over the past few weeks? Well, kicking things off up in Bonnie, Scotland. Uh, this is James on Benati Hill, uh, Scotland. The sun's out on his Levo. Wow, nice. beauty, beauty, beauty. Nice, nice. A few thousand miles to the west, you've got Eric in Boys. Boys! 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 Boys. Idaho out on his new Levo. Eric, yeah. how do you pronounce boys? Is it boys or is it boys or is it boys? Or is it boysy? How do you actually pronounce that? Nick, any ideas? Boise. 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 Right. Uh, and finally, to, uh, top of the Big Easy in South Island, New Zealand. Uh, this is Kim out riding with a couple of holiday e-bikers. They seem to be on some uh, hired KTMs yeah, there. Yeah, looking good. Yeah, high up on the mountain. So there you go, uh, a few weeks into the year and uh, great to see a mix of riding in different countries, hemispheres, climates uh, and continents. Yeah, I love seeing what you guys get up to all around the world on e-bikes. If you guys want to get involved, use the upload service to get all your content here on EMBN and you could be featured on next week's show. Details are on screen. Right, it's time for a little bit of ghetto tech. Now this is off-grid charging at its finest. This is Ashley's van, meaning he can go out and ride all day whilst his other battery is charging his van. So he can do never-ending trail laps on his bike. Check it out. That looks pretty high tech to me, Christopher. Mm. Um, it's about time we got our van sorted. Are you, are you still running that extension lead out of your house? Yeah, it's all extension leads for me at the minute. I've got four chargers plugged in all over the place, but it's not a good look, is it? <laughs> So listen, have you guys uh, converted your vans or your cars for, to charging centers? Mm -hmm. uh, we want to see them. We want to we see what you guys are doing about off-grid charging for your e-man bikes. Okay, trotting across to the bike vault. Now, Tony uh, is kicking things off. He's out in his track Powerfly, out on the granite and gears trail of Dartmoor. Wow, nice looking shot there. Mm. This guy's heading up testing out some studded tyres out in southern Finland in the snow. Ito smashing the snowy icy trails on his Levo on his, his studded tyres. Is ET the name? I think so. Right. Mm. Uh, meanwhile, Andrew out in Rotorua on his Trek Powerfly at the... Powerfly? Did I say Powerfly? I meant Powerfly. Out of the Redwoods mountain bike park riding the uphill flow trails and then hitting the downhill tracks Fluffy Duck. Fluffy Tuck. Fluffy nice, Tuck nice Duck. We don't see too many propanes on the show, but that's a good looking bike, Steve, isn't it? It is. This one is Stefan's, he's from Lower Austria, and he's out in the snow again as well. Now here's a question for you. Mm -hmm. Now the propanes have got a 625 watt hour Shimano battery, they am have. I wrong? They have. Well, but I've tried looking at that battery today and I cannot find that battery. Mm -hmm. Does that mean the Shimano's now 500 watt on that bike? Mm, maybe. Anyway, that's for another time. Uh, all of Dwayne's mates have been buying e-bikes, so he thought he would join the party with a shiny new Vitus e-Summit VRS to join them on the trails of Northern Ireland. Nice looking that wasn't that, Northern looking. Irish at all, that was pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> this one's coming from Peter, he's just ran out of battery on his Scott Genius 900. He's out riding in South Lanarkshire. Look at that, mm. nice pick. High up in the windmills on the hill in Penistone with Mark on his new Mondrake, a crafty At the oven. windmills of your mind. Did you see that Pen film, The Thomas Penistone? Crown Affair? No, I've not seen that one. Yeah. Um, he's exploring the hills of Yorkshire. Wow, mm. look at that. Lastly, oh. Peter's been out in his voodoo zoo bop riding the trails around Ferns, says close Surrey Hills. It's quite a British theme to the bike fall this week, Chris. Right this week, wasn't it? Yeah. But what do you think of the bike of the week? Bike of the week. Good shots in there, wasn't it? It's got to be Andrew out on his power fly in the Redwoods. You know, look at that. It absolutely that screams mountain biking to me. Great shot, great location. I think that's got to be the bike of the week, right? Bike of the week? Yeah, for sure. Give it the big one. Andrew, Steve. give him the big one for the bike of the week and the uh, Trek power fly. But that's it for this week's show. I'd love to hear from you guys all about your custom e-bikes. Let us know what mods you've done to your bikes in the comments box down below. If you want to stick around and check out another video, check out Winter and our guide to riding winter. All the best stuff you can do on your e-bike. That one's playing down here. 
Yeah, so next week we will be in South Africa for the EMBN show, and we'll also be looking at super fast e mountain bikes. Mm, should be a hell of a show. Don't forget to hit the globe in the middle of the screen to subscribe to EMBN, and we shall see you in the next show.